Welcome back to Can't Stop Art. I'm your host, Forty. So today we are doing a craft project. I've got this printout right here on A3 paper. It is a piece of digital art made in Cinema 4D and Photoshop. It's got some uh, depth of field, motion blur. It's got some color correction, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, uh, without further ado, what we're going to do here is we are going to take this paper cutter. We are going to trim off the white edges. And this more or less should fit this. I don't know if there's going to be any space. This board is not exactly... 30 by 30 centimeter or one foot by one foot, it's more or less, right? And unfortunately, A3 is almost 30 centimeters across or almost a foot across, not exactly. So let's see, I don't know. When I line it up right here, it looks like um, it doesn't uh, line up exactly right there. Here, actually, it looks like it does all right. So maybe this is gonna fit perfect, huh? So anyway, uh, the next thing that we are going to do, or the first thing that we're going to do before we worry about that, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, is we want to protect this uh, board, right? I got this board, um, and I, I forget what the reason was that I got it, right? But anyways, I should probably take off this sticker right here. I'm going to fast forward the video of me taking off the sticker. <laughs> All right, so the sticker is more or less off. And I was thinking, you know what? I was going to varnish it to protect the bottom from water and stuff like that. But actually, why don't we paint it first, right? So I've got these coasters. You may have seen another video how I did one of them. Uh, I'm just going to use that to lift it up. You know what? I'm going to paint both sides of this. Uh, and that way, it's got some protection already because when the acrylic paint dries, it's more or less like, um, like plastic, right? So let's get a little paint going right here. May have to put a little bit more. Let's see. Uh, let me grab a big brush. All right, so I've got a big brush right here, and I'm ch I'm not even using any water. Huh? Let's just get in there, start to paint. I have it lifted. I even have a tarp here, just a case that I could have put underneath or that I should have. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, let's just try to get this going, and I'm going to come here. I'm going to pick it up, right? Because there's nothing that says we can't pick it up. It's okay if there's paint on the bottom because I have it lifted with this coaster. And uh, doing the paint right here, even if I get on the other side a little bit, it shouldn't matter because, again, the coaster is in the center. They shouldn't overlap. Um, but maybe this way we can try to get the sides done in the same pass, right? So I don't know how well I'm doing under the camera. Right here. All right. Again, this doesn't have to be exactly perfect. What we'll do after this dries, the next pass will be to hit it with uh, polyurethane to protect it and, uh, on one side. We don't have to do that on the side we're going to add the, the print to, right? So actually, that's the purpose of today's video is to add a, a print to a piece of wood. How do you do that, right? And what are some of the things that you may encounter or come across, best practice, etc.? We're going to talk about that. So, I'm going to fast forward the video through this so you don't have to listen to me talk just while I paint this uh, board, huh? Okay, so we've painted this now black on the sides and one side. We're going to wait for this to dry. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to paint that side, and then we're going to cut this paper. Well, actually, then we're going to put polyurethane on the back and the sides. Then we'll cut the paper and put it on. I'll be back. Yo, so we're back, and I've let this dry. I think it's dry. Let's touch it to make sure. And the sticky uh, part where I took out the sticker is still wet, but looks like it's dry, huh? More or less. So let's. Uh, we're not going to touch the side, and this part that has the sticker, I'm going to leave it because uh, that's just, this is the side I'm going to put the print. But on the sides, if you could see, let's go ahead and add a varnish or a polyurethane varnish. Something like this could be good for outside, for example. So I'm going to shake this up a little bit. Um, this is clear, uh, glossy varnish. I'm going to leave this right here. And I should get my, um, let's see, the tarp, right? I have it right here. As soon as I open this lid, I'll grab it. And that's just in case this stuff drips. It smells pretty bad. So make sure, sorry about that. Make sure that you have some airflow in the room, right? If you don't, what's going to happen? It's not good for you, right? Open up a window or have a f have uh, open up a window, have a fan going, like go all out, right? <laughs> or do it outside, right? Because that stuff does not smell nice. So I'll go ahead and put this down, put this in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, one of the things, obviously, is this might touch the varnish after I put it. I'm going to end up using one of these foam brushes. 
reason I'm going to do that is because every time I use a regular brush, it just messes it up, right? Because this is not made with water, so it's not easily cleaned up. Although I think it says it's made with water, but it just never easily cleans up. Let's see. It can't be made with water, just based on the smell, right? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to take this, and I think I should do the sides first, huh? So I'm going to pick this up, try not to have too much on the brush, and I'm going to come across here and just try to give it like a nice coat, right? It doesn't have to be super thick. Just get a little protection going. We could even do this again when we finish the piece, right? So I know I'm out of camera right now, or at least one of the cameras right now. Um, it's more important that I'm doing this right in my head than whether you guys are seeing it exactly. I mean, you're seeing it on one camera, but don't worry. As soon as I do the sides, we will then make sure that you see, <laughs> you're seeing this better. Uh, when I'm finished uh, with, with what I'm doing right now, we let it dry, then we will apply the print to the piece. When it's done, we will do this again to protect the other side. Huh? I'm going to fast forward it so you don't have to wait while I'm doing this. All right, so now we finish the sides. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this on the top. And the reason that I ended up using this foam brush, like I said, is so I could throw it away afterward, right? Instead of the hassle of washing with turpentine, etc. Although I'm not using turpentine, I'm using this other stuff called, I don't know, white spirit, or I don't know. It's something that's supposed to be better for the environment, um, and it cleans it up too. I just let it soak in there, but it doesn't do the most amazing job, and I swear if you use a brush for varnish, you don't end up using it for anything else, huh? So again, you don't want a majorly, th or major, majorly, a th very, too thick of a coat. Um, this stuff is going to create a nice... Um, protective layer. That's all we're looking for. It's not like I think this is going to be outside anyway. This is just going to add a bit more protection. So let's add a little bit more here. All right, so this thing's done. We're going to let it dry. I'm going to throw this away. Um, but before I do that, you know, I got a little bit of this stuff in the sides right here. So I'm going to try to fold this paper towel, try to pick it up. It's not like if you leave it there and let it dry, it's over. You know what I mean? You could do that. This OCD about stuff like this. So, looks like we got more or less a bunch of it. I don't know about all of it. That's fine. We're going to turn this around, put this on top. I have a little mallet here to hit the top down. I'm going to throw this away. You don't really need to hear me banging this down to get it on top. We'll be back after this dries and we will apply the print. Yo, we're back. So, I let this thing dry for probably like, uh, I don't know, two and a half, three hours, something like that. I did a workout, went skateboarding for a bit, and I'm back. Uh, it's dry to the touch. Granted, it is not fully dry, but it's enough for us to move on, right? So I can touch it. It's not sticky. It's not whatever. Anyways, we'll leave this here. For now, we're going to put it off to the side, guys. Right? Oh, as I smack the mic. I apologize about that. Let me grab uh, the cutter, which is right here, and then the print. So... This print was done on archival matte paper. I prefer matte than gloss. Plus, we are going to varnish this anyway, which will give it a gloss-like finish. On this particular paper uh, cutter, what I need to do is align this here. And I, what I can do is I just align the edge. It looks pretty good to me. So, wow, actually, I'm aligning at the wrong spot where the, the blade is, huh? So once this is lined up, which that looks more or less lined up, then I run this through, boom, this comes off, and we have a beautiful, straight, perfect cut. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll put the paper underneath. I'll line this up. Actually, I prefer the blade on the other side because then I can see both sides that it's perfect, huh? So I'll bring this through, get it past the blade. And to be honest, uh, this is probably going to be longer in this direction than it needs to be. But that's okay, I'm gonna show you how we fix that uh, after we apply it. So boom, we take this off, and this thing is looking good now, huh? I can get rid of these white pieces of paper, put the paper cutter off to the side. Paper right here. We're gonna bring this puppy back. And what I wanna do is I wanna glue this, right? So I'm gonna bring back the tarp. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to do too much here, right? <laughs> so, and I just thought, oh, I was wearing a tank top in the previous two videos, and now I've switched to the t-shirt. That's because I was out skateboarding. It is what it is, huh? We're not worried about uh, uniformity. This is not a film. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do here is I still will raise this, huh? Why not? 
this sh doesn't, I mean, it feels rough, but it shouldn't scratch this as long as I don't move it too much. And the idea here, I do have uh, this because I was going to use this earlier um, for the paint and I decided not to. So is I'm going to use this for the glue, huh? And we have to figure out which side is which. So when I go like this, this uh, barely, one side is longer than the other, huh? So let me figure that out. So I think it's like this, huh? So that's something I need to take note of because again, like I said, this, this board is not 30 by 30 exactly. It's a little less than 30 centimeters by a little more than 30 centimeters. This paper is at its width uh, 29.7 uh, centimeters. So 0 0.03 centimeters less than 30, which is fine because like I said, this is not fully 30. So this fits perfect across. However, up and down, it's this is uh, roughly, excuse me, 30. Uh, but uh, up and down, it's a little bit bigger. Anyway, so we'll trim it after. That's the point. So what I want to do is I want to put glue here and glue on the back of this. I'll put this to the side. I'm going to use Mod Podge. You can use other white types of glue. This is a crafting glue. I have it in a very large size. Granted, when you buy this, you probably wouldn't get it in this size. Maybe you get it smaller unless you go for the, for the volume discount like myself. So I'm going to open this puppy up. And the idea here... You see how it's like, first of all, on the sides, it's, uh, it's like dried, right? So you might, might want to take that off. There might even be dried stuff in here that happens sometimes. We don't want to pour too much or too little. So watch as I do this, huh? As I'm eyeing this, like, oh, where is it? Now it's coming out, right? So something like this is probably good. Now, that, that actually might be too much. I can use the, the foam brush to pick some of that up. I'll put it off the side. This might be too much, but that's actually okay because we're still going to do the paper, right? In fact, for sure, this is too much. Look at that. And as it's dripping off the side here, no worries. We can grab a paper towel and uh, let's put this for here. And it's okay. Anyway, this dries clear, right? So it's okay if we get it on the sides or, or whatever, because it's not going to leave a color. It's okay if we glue ourselves. I do it all the time. <laughs> and like I said, we want to go through this. Uh, it doesn't dry super fast, but it doesn't dry that slow either. So we're going to come in here. Next, let's take this glue and just hit this paper, right? And we just want to go over this paper. I don't care if I get the tarp right. We're just getting the back side of this paper. We'll grab some more glue from there. We'll come here. Boom. Grab a little more glue from there. Boom. All we're doing is going up and down, huh? we go there we go now we got this pretty good probably the way we need to get it let's come back here let's make sure we have this good and we might have to take off excess glue so we'll take a paper towel and we'll use the paper towels to take off any excess glue like so right we'll just squeeze it boom that foam that soaked it all up we'll come back here and we want it to be on there we just don't want it to be thick, huh? Because the problem is if it's too thick, we're going to have problems with the paper. If this was, uh, if this was something else, pa the problem is paper, it's going to have like, uh, it's too much glue equals wet equals problems equals, uh, it's not bubbles. It will be like raised, huh? So again, almost done here. Let's get to the edges, which are very important, obviously. And remember this, the foam brush, uh, 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 soaks up some of the glue. So if you take it in the corner and you just press it down, it's going to release some of that glue that it's taken on. Huh? And at this point, there we go. I think we're, we're almost there. And there is like a little chunk of dried stuff right here. You can see, I'm going to nick that up. We're going to put it over here on the paper towel. And I think that's good. huh? So now we got blue on both things the paper as well as what we're attaching it to. We've got it to the corners, hopefully really well, more or less. Put the, this extra paper towel to the side. We're gonna flip this over. Remember, we're working on a clock here, right? And I think that we said it was like this, right? If I remember correctly, I hope. So we're gonna try to put this on more or less straight. You'll notice that there's some glue on one side, huh? And what I'm doing is I'm going from the outside in. Remember, if there's glue here and you push the glue on top of this, it is going to rip the paper or it's going to pull some of the ink or whatever. I'm trying not to do that, huh? I'm just trying to look where I can put it and ugh, that looks pretty good, huh? There's a little glue on the side of the paper, which means I have to be even more careful, huh? So I want this to be flat 
And the other problem is with getting glue on this side of the paper is putting something over to, to press it down, right? Because it could technically glue to that. But when I touch my hands here, I don't feel it being too sticky so I or really sticky at all. So I think it should be okay, huh? And it feels, <coughs> excuse me, like we more or less got to the edges, huh? In fact, I don't have it equally falling off this side. Most of it's falling off. That's, that's fine. We need to use a razor blade later to cut it after it fully sticks to this board. And again, too much of this, you need to be careful. I don't know how to illustrate that. This stuff right here is going to be fixed when we varnish it. You will see this no matter what right now when it dries, the, the glue dries. I don't know how well you can see. Let me bring this closer to the camera. I don't know if you could see this right here or this right here. Uh, basically, that's glue, huh? And it will discolor this. However, when we varnish this or if we resined it, that would go away, right? So again, you just want to make sure there's no bubbles in there. And I don't really feel bubbles in here. Well, maybe a bit, huh? So. There we go. More or less, I think we got it, huh? Maybe we're going to add something to weigh this down. Let me find something. In fact, what we can probably do. Now, this is the, like I said, this is the thing that you need to worry about. Make sure nothing up here feels gluish because that could cause a problem. This covers it more or less, huh? We'll put this, let's find something heavy. I'll grab some books. All right, good old juxtapose, right? Some other books here. And uh, boom, a fishing book on top. So this should add some weight, really get this to stay down. And that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna let this dry for at least 40 minutes or something like that. Then we're gonna come back, we're gonna varnish it. And uh, yeah, really we need to varnish it for a few reasons. I will explain when we come back. Yo, so we're back. It's been 30, 35 minutes. Okay, probably it's okay to move on. You know, me and patience, right? So let's take this off. Let's see what's going down. I brought some razor blades over here. And the reason for the razor blades is to get rid of the excess, huh? So basically what I'm going to do, and if I come here on the edge, it's a little bit lifting in some spots. We'll see how we're going to fix that. Huh? So it really depends what you're going to do next. Huh? Because technically, if I resin this, I wouldn't worry about the stuff's lifting on the side because the resin would make sure that that's not a concern. So I'm going to take one of these uh, razor blades. I'm going to open it up. And you got to be very careful if you're doing this. huh? These razor blades are extremely sharp. It's just got some sticky stuff to keep this uh, this small wrapping uh, closed, huh? Once I have it open, I mean, this could cut you super easy. The idea that I want to do is I want to take this, I want to eye. I'm not going to be able to do this in the camera. I don't think. Let's let's try actually. If I bring this over, maybe there. Hopefully, it's not getting glue on it. I'm going to get up, so I'm going to look funny in one of the views. But the idea right here is I'm going to hold this, and I might even curve it a little bit. The idea is I'm trying to follow the edge right there, right? So if I come down, and now I'm kind of uh, touching my finger against the blade, and I'm guiding it as it goes down, right? You see that? Guiding it, guiding it, and I'm pressing to keep it pressed against the, the wood, but not cut the wood, huh? And it's like firm but steady. When we get to the bottom, boom, it just comes off. Now, if you look at this, you'll see we have perfect, right? Uh, I'll even come right here. Maybe there's a slight wave, like uh, maybe it uh, faltered away or something, but it's more or less, it's perfect, huh? It's flush, etc. Let me see if I have to do this on other any of the other sides. It could probably use it here and maybe also here. So two more sides that I'm going to do this on. Um, I'm not going to, well, I'll try to do it in the camera again, huh? Keeping it on here, I know this is a little bit away from this camera, what we're going to do, and you'll see there's a little bit of glue here. Let's take this off, rub the glue on our shorts, <laughs> and let's do the same thing. We're going to take this blade, and this is a, a cut, on, or it's got a blade on both sides, huh? So we're going to come here, we're going to find the corner, and we are going to start and we want to start, I'm using my finger to press that down. And now I'm going to keep this against the board and just go slow, right? I don't want to put too much uh, pressure. Otherwise, we're going to cut deep because this thing could easily cut into the wood, huh? So as we go down, keeping pressure, keeping pressure. And right there, I think I went 
too much. So I pull back a little bit, come all the way to the bottom, boom. Now that piece is off, huh? So I think we have one more side. And you'll notice, like, it's very thin, huh? But now it's flush. And that's what we want, huh? Flush. This side, is it flush? If you take your finger and you just go like this, you could feel if it's flush, huh? It is not on this side. We'll do the same thing on this side. And notice right here, actually, at the top, it doesn't look that bad, huh? So if I take this... Maybe let's start on the other side. We could have started on that side, but what will happen is probably when you're working where it's not away from it, you'll end up cutting into the, the board more. So I just cut a little piece of the paper and I want it to start it. There we go. And just run it slow, right? Put pressure, but not that much. And at some point, this is going to just break off because there won't be anything else to cut down there because it was flush at the bottom. Now we've got it perfect on every side. If we run our finger, we touch the wood, we touch this. Maybe even, maybe I can take away a hair on this side, huh? And then we'll call it done. So again, there's a little bit glue right there, that's all right. And what I mean is by on the corner, huh? So, when I come here, I'm gonna start it like that. And believe me, this is a lot easier when you're not trying to have it face the camera, right? Notice how it stopped at one point because there was no more to give. And what I'm talking about, maybe that's paint. It's not glue, huh? But anyways, now what we have is really a nice, a perfect, this thing is perfect. There are, it sounds like it could lift a little bit. And what can we do to fix that? Before moving on, let's address that, huh? It means it's going to take longer to finish this, but hey, we want something that comes out really clean. I don't have resin <laughs> right now. If I had resin, what we would do first is varnish this. The reason that you would varnish this, if I just put resin on top of this, resin will make everything darker. You need to varnish it first so this, this print doesn't lose color. Because if you have uh, resined it first, what would happen is the paper would absorb the resin. It would get a lot darker. We don't want that. So I'm going to grab some glue. I'm going to grab a foam brush. And we're just going to hit the sides with the glue and the foam brush. Boom, <laughs> I'm back. So let's get rid of these books. And what I'm gonna use this for is something to put glue on because we don't wanna have a lot of glue. You don't wanna, it's not like we wanna dip this in there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on here. We can always clean it off afterward. This is a new palette. So we don't need that much. Just like, that's probably good. We wanna make sure paper towels are close by and they're right here actually. And again, dried. Dried stuff, we'll just take that off, we'll throw it away. I'm gonna close the glue. And now what we're gonna do is take our foam brush. We were gonna take the side. We're just gonna go down the side. Dab, dab, dab. Like that. And we want to make sure we get the top of this, huh? We're gonna make sure that we are creating some glue where the paper meets the wood, right? Just like that, and that came out nice. Next, now if we pick it up and we put it on this, this side won't touch, which already has glue. So that's our fix. We'll come here, dab, 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 dab. Boom, right? Now I'm going to just go ahead and do this, but you understand what you're supposed to be doing here is putting enough glue. You want to make sure it touches. Now when we get to the last part, uh, obviously we, we can't put this on here because then it will stick to it. We'll have to do it in the air, but that's all right. All right, let me do this and I will speed it up. Now that we've applied it to the sides, we are going to take this and we are going to apply this to the top. This is where you don't want to, you want to do the same thing we did before. You don't want to overdo this, huh? Doing this is kind of like a pre-varnish, huh? It should make it so that there's no way that this paper changes colors. It should also make it so that, um, so if you're going to resin, even if you're going to varnish, depending on what varnish you use, you should always test it. Uh, if you're not sure, you can put a layer of Mod Podge and Mod Podge will make sure that it doesn't change colors. There's also a pH neutral glue out there that you can use. I use it for some stuff. It's significantly more expensive than Mod Podge. So uh, if you know Mod Podge will work, I would just use Mod Podge because why use the other stuff that's more expensive? And so let's add some more glue. Let's do this quickly because we don't want it to start drying in certain places uh, where we haven't added the glue, right? So putting a little bit more glue there. Let's close this. It's not totally closed. Better remind myself to close it. <laughs> and there we go. Something like this, huh? 
And again, you see how this, uh, if, if you do go one way, come back and try to get them to all go in the same direction. The reason for that is if you don't do that, then what's going to happen is you might have streaks. And if you do have streaks, you just want them to be going in the same direction because it will look more uniform, et cetera, et cetera. So let me get this there. Cool. Get this side down to the bottom. Let's go all the way. Bang, bang, bang. I know some of you watch just for the sound effects, right? <laughs> uh, there we go. So after we have this good, we'll just grab a little bit more glue so I can go uniformly. We're going to go across this way. Or maybe we should have went the other way. Whatever. And here it's already drying, huh? So just grab a little bit more glue so this glides across easier. We want all of our streaks, if there are any at the end, to go in one direction. Huh? However, even if there are, and maybe on the edges, I come back and I just hit the edges to get that cleanness. It's okay if they're going in different directions just for the edge, right? It shouldn't really have a streak. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. We're going to come back. Then we are going to hit it with the polyurethane uh, varnish. And uh, yeah, and then we will call it done. Or maybe we will even spice this up because we can do other things to the print now. We could technically print or paint on top of it. I could add gold foil on top of 40, for example, to sign it with a foil that will make it original. In fact, let's do that. So I'll let this dry. We'll come back and we'll do that. Hey guys, it's been about 30 minutes, uh, give or take. It looks dry, huh? So let's do a test. Maybe touch the corner sides. Looks dry. This looks dry. You'll see that you could see some of the, the brush strokes from that uh, the foam brush or whatever. We're going to fix that when we add the polyurethane. It should make it so you don't see that. Huh? One of the things that you might note is when you put the glue on top, it will, I don't know if it shrinks the paper, but it does. It seems like it does, right? Everything gets tighter. So if there was an air bubble, maybe it's it, it, it squeezed the paper or whatever. I mean, there is none. This thing looks really, really nice right now. So what I thought we would do, in fact, I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to fast forward it because I think this video is going on way too long, right? We are going to take something here called Mona Lisa ad uh, adhesive size, right? And what this is, is this is a glue, a special adhesive for uh, gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf, etc. I'm going to do my, my name 40 in uh, gold leaf. I was also thinking to do silver coming out of these. I don't know, to give it a little something extra. If I do that, then I should probably do this one first before I do the 40 just to make sure that I get it. Um, and yeah, let's, well, let's do that. So I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to work and I will speed it up later. And then I will talk in the, you know, wrapping this up. Huh? Okay, so I just finished adding the adhesive size, which is the adhesive for the foil, and you need to wait 30 minutes, huh? So one of the things that is a challenge here, I have lights on me, and we are doing things that are white, right? And this stuff is white, however it dries clear. And one way you know that it's ready is that it will be clear. If you put on a thin layer, for sure 30 minutes is enough time. Uh, so just wait, make sure you wait 30 minutes. The other way is if it's against something where there's a contrasting color, then as soon as it's clear, then it's dry. And at that point you could put on the leaf. So what I'm gonna do right now, and you'll notice I did all of these light bars, which is what they are, so even here, one of the other things is it, this is water soluble, so you can wash this with soap and water afterward. You want to be careful where you put it. I tried to more or less follow the lines. If it went out, big deal, because when I put the foil on, I'll show you some tricks with that. We will be back in about 30 minutes to move to the next step. huh? And anyways, first we will do the silver for the lines. Then after we do that, then we can add the adhesive size to the name. We'll add the gold. And if we want to add any acrylic paint now would be, or then would be the time. We can paint over this and make it more uh, more homemade, more realistic. Uh, this is something you, do, you can do. My mom loves to do decoupage stuff. If you add these little extras, it makes it pop more, right? So we'll be back in about 30 minutes. Yo, so we're back. It's been 30 minutes. And this thing, uh, if we touch, it's tacky, huh? If we look at this with the light, we should see that it looks clear or, you know, I don't know because it's very difficult to see here, um, but it should be. It's been 30 minutes. 
I'm going to use imitation uh, silver leaf. If you use imitation instead of the real thing, make sure you always varnish. All the imitation stuff can discolor over time, whereas the real stuff should not. Um, either way, I would varnish, but something to keep in mind. On pieces where I commission pieces, I don't use the imitation stuff, but for something like this, it's, 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 it's fine, right? So you could use this in many different ways. Uh, using it with your hands is uh, questionable, huh? Because the oil from your your fingers we will stick to, huh? And just I'm just trying to get it in a few places. We're going to fix this in a second. I'm just putting it down where I can. There we go. Come right here. I'm trying not to waste too much of it. Maybe bring this piece right there. Well, that didn't work. So right there. Maybe this right there. And see, as we move this, it takes it away, huh? And that's what we're going to do when we finish. But right now, we just want to get it to cover everything, huh? And so that's what I'm doing. Next, you might even want to do this outside, huh? Because this makes a crazy mess. <laughs> um, I have done this many times. I'm aware of the mess. And I have a trash can, which you may or may not be able to see next to me, uh, which we will get to in a second, huh? And we will use it. Because what happens after you have this all laid out is you want to get the excess off, right? And we're not pressing too hard. We're just getting it over it. Boom. Look at this. And now the problem is this is so... Uh, it's so light, it's so thin that it goes anywhere and everywhere. So what I usually do is I make, and, and then look at how it is on my finger, huh? Even scraping it, which I'm doing it over the trash, going like this to get on my finger, very difficult. But what we can do is take a brush, a brush that you don't care about, mind you, bring this over the trash can, and uh, yeah. And maybe even have a handheld vacuum cleaner, which I have near. How do I do this so you can see? Let me bring the trash can here. That's not even going to work, huh? But all I'm going to do, let's move this. Maybe if I don't get this, it's less worrisome. All I'm going to do is this, huh? Lightly. I'm not going crazy, huh? And so I'll do the first one here just so you can see it. Now, all of a sudden, that's good. Of course, notice that a little bit goes in other places. We'll remove that with the paintbrush. Now, I'm going to take this here over the trash. Uh, you can see probably in one camera, not in the other. And it is what it is, huh? Just to make less of a mess because this stuff goes everywhere. If you can do it outside, amazing, huh? All right, so let me show you what it looks like right here. And this is where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And what I'm going to do while it's paused is I'm going to paint the adhesive on the 40. We are going to then add the gold leaf to it. I'm not going to record that because you've already seen the process. I'll come back when that's done to put on the varnish with you. And that should be our last step. All right, so we're back. Uh, today's actually the next day. I'm wearing the same thing for continuity. <laughs> also because I just woke up. Let's get this puppy finished, huh? So I don't know how well you can see here uh, with this camera right here, but I did a couple things. So I didn't record myself uh, adding the gold foil to the name here. And also, I don't know if you can see here, but I took a Posca marker, right? And with this Posca marker, I drew some outlines, not over everything, right? Like around some of it, not on the inside, on the outside. And uh, the reality is this color black, of course, is different than the color black of the print. So then what I did after all that stuff dried is I sprayed it with some acrylic varnish spray, right? And I did that because if you try to put a brush on varnish with a Posca marker, the Posca marker will move. It, it, I don't know how it loosens it up, but it does. So always spray with acrylic varnish uh, spray before you do uh, resin or before you do a, a brush on varnish if you use a Posca marker. So that's what we did. Anyway, so it's looking pretty good. I mean, the back's got some stuff. I mean, from this, huh? You notice it picked up some of the glitter. It is what it is. I'm not that worried about it. Um, we still probably use it. Maybe I'll turn it upside down, huh? Because this felt shouldn't <laughs> grab anything. Um, not a big deal. What we're going to do here is we're going to use this varnish right here. This is like a polyurethane. I'm going to shake it up. After I shake it up, I will grab a screwdriver to lift the lid. I have a brush that I totally ruined with this already. And I use, a, I think it's called white spirit or cleaning spirit or something like that. That's what I use to clean the brush, but it, it doesn't do it. Huh? I mean, it cleans it, but it's not perfect. Um, so that brush real quick is, oh, it's on my desk. I will grab it. So that brush is here. huh? And if you, I don't know if you could tell, but if I go like this, it's like, it's 
stuck together <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter with the cleaning spirit which is it's it's better for the earth than turpentine stuff like that it just yeah cleans it but not that amazingly and soap and water doesn't even fix it afterward either but that's fine what we're going to do now is we're going to hit this with varnish the sides the top maybe i'll do the back one more time and then after i do that i'll come back and share final thoughts Boom, so we finished the varnish, we hit the sides, we hit the top. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in that clean spirit, white spirit, whatever. I'm also gonna grab it so you can see when I come back what it is. We'll clean this brush. I'm not gonna record myself painting the back. In fact, I might not do that. Huh? So we're gonna call this done. When it's dry, I'll come back for final thoughts, guys. Yo, so we're back and this thing is done. Well, it still needs to totally dry cure, but it is dry to the touch, so I thought, let's finish the video so I can get it uploaded today. Let me remind you what we started with, right? We started with this piece of scrap wood that I had from some other project left over, etc. I still have more, huh? And uh, it was roughly one foot by one foot or 30 centimeter by 30 center, but a little less in one direction and a little more in one direction, which is cool because A3 uh, prints at, at right under 30 centimeters across. So across was fine. This was a little bit longer. We trimmed it. We put it on. We painted both sides. You can see that this picked up some of the glitter from this, it looks like, but whatever, it's okay. We didn't repaint back there. It should be protected, right? The sides have been hit twice with the polyurethane varnish. Uh, we added some silver uh, foil and some gold foil. We then put some Posca. We hit it with a spray varnish. Then we hit it with the polyurethane again to finish this puppy off. And this thing's done. It's ready to be hung. Um, we could have added some paint, for example. I thought for a moment, maybe in some of these dots here, to add some uh, UV or black light paint. But then I decided against it because I think it would make it pop too much compared to some other stuff. Oh, you might even notice right here that there is a little bit of gold foil, I think, stuck inside the, the, the varnish. Anyways, and this is what it, it was. This was a, uh, let me show this camera or this camera. This was the starting point, right? Digital art made in Cinema 4D and After Effects. And then we took the print and we made this a piece of art that you can actually use and hang. I probably wouldn't drill into this, you know? I would use those hanging strips press it against the wall. This is not very heavy and super cool. Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Please share the video with your friends. It helps immensely. Until next time, I'm out.